Hey there troops, it's me the Tactical Brit and I am here today for a new Tactical Tuesday and today we're going to be talking a bit more about the bad boys in front of me and that is of course tanks. Um, this is something that seems to come up quite a lot and it's something I want to address in Battlefield 5 and how these things work uh, in order just to really try and put across to you guys uh, some key points about tanking and some serious ways that you can inflict more damage with a tank whilst being killed less. It's something that's really important uh, and something that I feel as though a lot of people need to see and, and, and stuff I just want to mention in general. Now, the biggest question I always get asked is, you know, look, I'm dying in a tank too much. It happens often. I feel like my tank is weak. And yes, I, I will admit to you, Battlefield 5 for the most part has very weak tanks and vehicles in that sense. But it's something that can be avoided. And it's all to do with the surface area of your vehicles. Now, I'm not talking about some, some old school maths that you did back at school. But fundamentally, the surface area of your tank is what is going to be viewable to your targets. And there are certain angles of a tank that work best in order to avoid being hit. Now, for example, if you look at these tanks head on, you can see they actually have a pretty wide surface area in the sense that I have a lot to shoot at as another enemy vehicle in this area. If they were, I don't know, say 100 meters, 50 meters away, I still feel as though I would have a pretty strong read on being able to hit that target very easily. Now, as you rotate round to the sides, you can see that surface area opens up even more. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. Depending on your terrain, having a side sort of position on an enemy vehicle is not necessarily a bad thing. For example, if I'm this tank here and these rocks were a little bit higher, you would actually see that only the top of the gun would be viewable. Had there been rocks or some kind of gully around the edge of this tank, the actual turret itself would be the only part of the tank that you could hit and everything else would be covered. So not necessarily the, the worst thing in the world. The same applies to the rear of the vehicle. The rear of the vehicle has a large surface area and for the most part is actually the weakest tank available. Now I'm going to quickly switch over some of the tanks to show you just in general uh, the kind of options you'll see here. We've got the AA tank which again has a very large surface area and uh, just some of the other ones as well like you can see that you know every tank in Battlefield has a pretty chunky size to it. So what exactly is the best angle to, you know, approach a tank? How, how, how should you position your vehicle? Well, ironically, it's actually a side side variant. It's sort of around about this sweet spot. So if you position your tank diagonally towards an opponent, you're actually reducing the surface area significantly. And I'm going to hop in the tank and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So if I position my tank around about straight on, and I'm going to show you this once we get over towards the vehicle target range, you'll notice that the edge of the vehicle and the side of the vehicle uh, reduces the front and reduces the side. It's like a, a trade-off between the two. So, if I'm down here looking at these tank targets in the distance, and they're firing back at me, if I'm straight on, these tanks are going to have the full surface area to attack my tank. However, if I am angled slightly to the left or right, it becomes a diagonal shot. And it feels as though the side of the tank here to my right or the front of the tank has also partially been concealed as opposed to being dead on where i'm exposing a full frontal surface area that is much easier to hit for the most part that side on view gives a split between the two sides of the tank and when somebody fires at you it's very likely that because the tank is at an angle they'll actually miss so doing something along the lines of this as a setup means that if i'm a tank facing you from distance far away I'm going to see this. I'm going to see one edge and two edges. I'm not getting a front on shot and this actually increases the chance of a deflecting shot off the front or the side without exposing one whole surface area to your enemies at any given point. And this is a very effective way of tanking and something that I highly recommend, but you know, it's not necessarily the only way of doing it. And having a contextual understanding of what is around you in terms of uh, how you should be shooting at opponents is also very important. For example, having my tank side on when I'm in, let's say, this little area here. We've got entire sort of rock structures here. So if I have my tank to the side here, that's not necessarily an issue because only my turret is viewable. And of course, you'd ideally like this terrain to be a bit more flat, but for the most part, the side of my tank is protected. And minimizing the surface area that's viewable to your opponents is one of the most key ways of defending your tank and making sure you don't die. And with that as well, comes another major point and that is talking about 
uh, disengaging from attacks. Now, one of the biggest problems I see with tanking in Battlefield 5 is that people don't really know how to disengage from a target. So if I'm firing away at enemy tanks in the distance and all of a sudden I'm overwhelmed because there's just multiple tanks in the area, it's going to be a problem and I'm not going to survive. Well, the only issue I have really is, is how to get out of that situation. The likelihood is you're a damaged tank already. The likelihood is you're already relatively chunky in terms of size. So how do you get out of that situation without jeopardizing yourself well most part it's as simple as popping smoke but when people pop smoke they don't actually realize uh how other enemy players perceive what's going on now to you it appears that you're shrouded in smoke but to enemy opponents they still know that you're within that area you're a very large vehicle and just because you've got some smoke around you doesn't mean that you're suddenly gone However, what it does give you the opportunity to do, especially if you have smoke launchers equipped as opposed to the smoke system that shrouds your vehicle, is that it gives you the opportunity to realign and readjust and may necessarily give you the option to not pull out of an engagement. Now, tank battles for the most part in Battlefield are actually relatively simplistic because it's really about who lands the most powerful shells and what shells hit and what don't. So something like a, a dust off or something like a deflective shot can be massively important in terms of you winning that battle, which is why this side angle is so important, but why something as simple as doing something along the lines of this also makes sense. So imagine I'm taking these tanks face on from the distance, you know, they know I'm taking them face on, they know that for the most part that I'm going to be at this orientation. Well, when I pop smoke, the best thing to actually do would be to rotate completely and pull out in a different direction and maintain a certain angle. So rather than going backwards and forth as they would anticipate, I need to start heading sideways. I need to take an unanticipated approach to what they're expecting in the likelihood that one of their shots will deviate just enough to give me the edge in that given tank battle. Rotating completely can throw off your enemy because once they become comfortable with a shot that they're taking, especially at ranges, they won't change it. So if you see the tank shell coming in from a certain angle, be it in this case somewhere around to my west over here, the best thing for me actually do to, if it's coming from the west, would be to expose my front because of course the front is the most defensive part of the tank, and actually rotate, rotate away. So, let's say for example, I'm taking on this tank over here, and this tank has a, a pretty good shot on me, you know, I'd say I've got a pretty good shot on him, but all of a sudden I've become overwhelmed. There's more tanks, or I've taken a hit that I just can't muster. Something as simple as popping smoke, rotating and pulling out, would be much better because the likelihood is he was aiming for my front surface area that front surface area is now an angle and that smoke has given me an alternative approach now for the most part if you can keep your tank behind the smoke for an extended period of time you'll give yourself a longer period of time to get out of the situation but you'll also increase the likelihood of being shot so trying to find a nice in and out point between being in the smoke and out of the smoke is quite challenging but once you maintain that angle and change the orientation of your tank you'll likely find that most enemies players will miss what they're doing they won't they won't be able to hit you successively and finally the last thing i'd like to say in terms of tanking here is really understanding the terrain you're on the biggest thing i see you know it's one of the, it's one of the main reasons i die in a tank and i imagine it's one of the main reasons you guys die in a tank it's because you miss the crucial shot and a lot of us miss the crucial shot because we do things like this we barrel forward there's my target there's my target there's my oh look i've fallen down the trench you know, it's that change in terrain that can really screw people over. And the best way I like to visualize it now is that regardless of what situation you find yourself in, your tank should be at a level orientation with the tank that you're fighting against. If you've got a tank that's, I don't know, up on that ridge line over there or down below you, you need to change that situation as rapidly as possible because having variances in terms of altitude can really screw you over because these tank turrets in Battlefield 5 do not have up and down movement. You have to maintain a certain degree of levelness with the tank that you're fighting in order to really be of any good impact. And that's probably my pro tips for the most extent. But the final thing I do want to mention is how you shoot your tanks. This is something that I, I, I genuinely don't understand. Now, for those of you who are newer to the game, or perhaps if, even if you're an old veteran, um, one of the biggest things I see is that people aren't used to ranging. So, I'd say that's probably pff, between 50 and 80 meters at best. You don't have to be the most 
accurate in terms of what estimate you're applying here. But for the most part, my bullets and shells aren't going to drop very much. 50 to 80 meters, no issue. Over there, however, there is a degree of variance. You know, you're seeing that over time the shell will drop. And even if I just fire this up into the sky, you'll see the dip, the arc that these shells carry. Now, if your tank's a lighter tank as well, you'll notice that the shells themselves will have even a larger drop, and that can be hugely problematic for what you're trying to achieve. So, aiming at a target just above is really the way to test, but I'd really recommend for most people who are new to ranging and new to understanding the differences of where tanks are, um, I would really recommend using smoke launchers and almost like a barrage of shells. I actually... When I first began Battlefield, I actually didn't hit the tank directly if he was nearby. I would aim for something that I would see as equidistant, like this little tri-section in the road there, and see if I had the right ranging, and then there you go. You got the kind of idea. And looking for landmarks and reference points that can give you a good idea of range uh, is certainly something you'll find beneficial. I know that these rocks are very close to me. I know they're about 50 to 80 meters. No bullet drop. I know that's probably closer to 100 to 150. So I know that there needs to be an additive in terms of my shell. And again, it's the fine margins of battlefield in terms of where you aim your shells that can really make the difference. And the final thing I want to talk about is, of course, soldiers. Soldiers in Battlefield are a pain in the ass. Um, one of the biggest things I see is that people don't really know how to deal with infantry that's moving. Um, of course, you need to be moving as well, but for the most part, spraying a machine gun does do the trick. But one thing I really recommend is that you can actually switch between the gun and the actual, you know, the weapons that you're using relatively quickly. So I can go from a main cannon like this and a gun very easily. So if I fire at this soldier here... You barely notice the delay between what I'm doing because I'm just switching back and forth between the two as they reload to the extent that there has been no issue made here and for the most part I can continue to suppress that soldier and cause him trouble in the hope that he gets taken out before he lands a critical shot. So folks that's about it from me today the Tactical Brit. As always thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon in another video.